So, uh, hi everybody. I don't ask this question, do you know me? Or what was it? Uh, I think everybody have agreed that uh, the my, di my data type of thinking is way to go. So there has been like different speakers already proven to you that like definitely there is a benefit uh, for economy, for a region, for people. So that's the way to go. So let's do it. I'm like, why have we talk about it? Let's do it. I mean, like, obviously, I think there are like many Finnish uh, government officers also who have tried, uh, like we, uh, like trying to persuade European Union, like, let's do it, let's do it, like, let's let's have this kind of disruption, and have failed. Uh, personally, I can say that. Um, when I like, promoted this, uh, I think two years ago, uh, when the European Union was uh, uh, compiling a new uh, digital single market strategy, uh, Estonia wanted to put this inside that strategy, we failed. But it doesn't matter that we shouldn't try again. So, uh, especially when we talk about those initiatives, uh, we need to make, uh, make a say, put certain cornerstones in place. Uh, so the system could actually start uh, build itself afterwards. And one of the key issues here is that, okay, we talk about my data, we talk about that, okay, it should be shared, etc. But it's obvious that uh, um, <clears throat> it just doesn't happen, I mean, like in your opinion, uh, currently. Why? Even though we have like 500 million customers uh, on this market, we have 28 different markets. And what it means is that we're never going to have a leg legislation that is good for everybody. I mean, uh, the understanding of privacy, data protection, uh, like my data, etc., for example, in Germany, is totally different compared with the attitude what you have in Nordics. And like trying to find like the same, I say, understanding, like uh, same legislation that can be approved by all the European like countries, it, it's not going to happen. So we, we need to like approach this question in a different way. And uh, one of the ways how we can like use this, how we should, should, should uh, approach this question is take this to the personal level. So let the person decide how private or how open they want to be, or how naked as the last question was on the on stage here. I mean, if I want to protect my privacy, like in a way, not giving out any kind of data, that's your call. But if you want to share your data, why not? Like, we should like, put this question on, on a personal level. So let the person decide. Obviously, we need to protect that person like, to a certain level. That, like, for example, if, if you are like, uh, how say, how you act, if you act like, let's say, really irrationally, like, there should be some kind of protection. But, but in, 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 in essence, it's your decision. Um, I'm an engineer, so obviously it would be great if all the European citizens uh, have some kind of uh, common digital unique identity. And I'm not talking about ID card, I'm talking about the unique identifier. Like you have in Finland, like Swedes have in Sweden, like we have in Estonia. So basically unique identifier that both sectors, the private sector and the public sector both use. I mean. Like, you guys from South Africa and UK, you should picture that, because that's the real power of data that you have never felt. I mean, like, the thing that private sector and public sector using the same unique identifiers about the object actually means that you can start connecting data and combining that data. So everybody's using, like the banks, telecoms, the, the government, all are using the same unique identifiers. So the healthcare system, everybody uses the same unique identifiers. So it's very easy to combine data. And that's what the thing, what the Nordic countries uh, already have built in their systems like 20, 30 years ago. So for example, a person in Estonia, like let's say it's, it's, it's me. Uh, yes, in the beginning, uh, we gave our data and information to different institutions. And uh, it was just, I think 10 years ago, uh, like we, maybe we all understood that like, like the person is important and we shouldn't like let the person to run from one ministry to another ministry to one bank to another bank 
that that data should be shared. So uh, what we did is um, we introduced this like once only concept. Like let's 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 build our like Estonian society in a way where the information is asked from the customer, and the customer means here like the citizen or the bank customer, whatever that has this customer information only once. So if there is a registry holder who already has that information, especially in government, you should take that information from that registry, not asking it again from the person. That was the, the aim of the concept. So basically removing uh, one black line and then taking information from another uh, registry. Uh, it was great success. I mean, uh, people like that. People like the idea that they don't have to run from one ministry to another ministry. That like uh, registry holders are actually exchanging and sharing the data. Uh, they like that. Why? Why we know that? This is our government IT at the moment. So all the like uh, green dots are representing different databases. On the black lines are representing the connections between those databases. So whenever the data is needed, like from another ministry or like uh, company, they can actually uh, ask it uh, like from another one. Uh, yes, it's a complicated picture. We most probably mostly we use this kind of picture. Uh, it's the famous Stenon X road uh, in Finnish land. You now it's the Paulelus Vaula or something like that. So uh, that's how it's connected and that's how we how it's built, but the point is that it's always like point-to-point -point connections. It's not like uh, some kind of service bus you see like on this picture. It's the real picture is, is this. So my point here is that, uh, that when we talk about uh, taking this kind of stuff on a European level to make my data actually happen and then and, and some like push, how can we push it through? It's not just regulation we need to, how to say, uh, accept and or, or like redefine in Europe. It's also certain triggers we need to put in, in place to make things happen. So uh, the thing that like you can like exchange data between the government like ministries, uh, it's not enough. Uh, you can see in 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, the exchange of data between ministries was basically the same. In 2007, we introduced one of the principle, and the principle was that you actually have to take it. The data, you have to take it from another ministry. If they have it, you can't ask it from the customer, like from the citizen again. That was a rule, and people liked that. People started to use that. I mean, like whenever a ministry asked some kind of information about them, they said, no, no, no. That third ministry, they have it, take it from there. And you see the exponential growth after that. There are reasons why there are like stop in 2011, 12, but uh, that's another story why there is a throwback. So there was a one sort of principle was act actually the trigger, the activator, who actually forced those ministers to start exchanging data. And what what it mean, meant for for normal person, no cues, no hassle, no I'll say like take this paper to that uh, minister like. Uh, uh, bring me information from your bank statement. All that gone. So, let's do it. Let's do it on a European Union level. In Europe, we have four freedoms, right? Free movement of people, capital, services, and goods. So what it means, like European citizen, I can go to any country, start working. I can go to any European country, start investing, selling my stuff, giving services. That's, that's free. So how, it's, how it looks in real life. If I go to Germany, uh, or even a better example, Finland. Uh, if I work in Finland, I need to present uh, uh, not like, uh, a paper from a state and tax and custom to Finnish tax and custom. Uh, now they have improved, now they have direct connection, but just a couple of years ago, you had to travel back to Estonia. Uh, that information was printed out, stamped, signed, given to the person. person took a ferry back to Helsinki, handed over to the Finnish Tax and Custom, where the, like, the guy or lady typed it in. So two 
uh, technically advanced countries exchanging data on paper. So the same thing is happening like if I go to Spain or like uh, Germany. It should be in the way this way that if I go to Spain, I would say I want to work here, you need information, okay. I, I give you permission to use my data from Estonian government. I also give you an ID, a unique identifier that you can use to do that query. That how it should go. Normal thing. Should be, I don't know, should be nice. Another example. Um, I'm uh, like, I come from private sector actually, so I'm like earlier retired uh, uh, software engineer. And that's why I'm working for the government, so I can afford it. So uh, I go to Germany, I want to establish a new business. Uh, I also want to uh, like um, create, like build a new factory, and I need a loan for that. So even though I'm like, I have like great 20 years financial history in Nordic region, and Nordic banks know me, the German banks know nothing about me. So there is a zero chance I will get the normal loan in Germany. Or if you bring us your six years bank statement on paper, then we might consider giving you a loan. It still happens. Vice versa also. If a German comes to Estonia and wants to get a uh, loan, for example, from, from, from Nordic banks, present information about your like, uh, uh, financial history. Uh, we all understand it's wrong. It should be this way that I give your permission that you will access my data in Swedbank, for example, and I can also give you a unique identifier that how you can access that data and please use it and, and make me a good offer. That's how it should be. So, in the end of the day, it comes back to the re really like simple question. Who controls the data? Is it the bank, like you asked, or is it me? Is it the government, or is it me? Uh, in Estonia, for example, hospitals are also connected, so doctor can access any Estonian uh, patient information. They don't do that without permission, because if they do that without permission, and if they get caught, they will, the, the career is off, and if their information is actually given to third person, they go to jail. So they don't do that, even though they have access. But yes, there is better healthcare if doctors can share information. There is better information, uh, better, better healthcare if X-ray pictures, for example, are shared between uh, hospitals, etc. So yes, the value is there, and uh, I mean, like even if people have access, they don't take advantage of that. So it's possible to build that kind of system, and that's the thing. If we say that the fifth freedom in European Union, in European Union should be data. And also, we say that in the European Union, the person should have a control of their own data. Then yes, there's a challenge. We need to define what kind of data is the data that you have a control. And obviously, the only data you can have a control is the so-called raw data, the data that you actually create. So if I my uh, statements in my bank statement is the data created by me, Without my actions, there wouldn't be any information in my bank statement. If I walk and, and uh, Fitbit is, is actually controlling me, uh, I'm creating that information that they are recording. If I Google the searches I'm doing, that information, that's the raw data that Google uses and sells it to third persons at the moment. I should have a right to control that. That should be the way how we could trigger this whole my data thing, at least in Europe. So for example, let's say that Tuli has a startup. And for that startup, uh, she needs information, at least from like 1,000 person, like, uh, uh, like from, from her region. So currently, I mean, uh, giving us all the, uh, like internal things, uh, like some kind of indicators or like uh, some kind of stuff that we have to carry for six months. So it takes too much time to actually prove if, he start, uh, if she, her startup can fly or not. But uh, let's say that uh, Tuli motivates me. It's money 
or is it just a like a simple question like motivates me to give my raw data to her to her so let's say it's my movements my last six month movements and apple records my movements after every 30 seconds so uh, i give Tuli a right also uh, a unique identifier in apple case it would be my uh, apple username apple id uh, there has to be a broker because uh, apple won't start dealing with all the startups i mean like it's a mess i mean like uh, uh, like having API connections with like thousands of startups asking questions, uh, asking information, and, and giving like uh, I say we have a permission, we have a, we have a right from Tavi that we could actually query this data from you, won't happen. So there has to be a layer of brokers, uh, or you have another definition in my data, operators. operators. Yeah. So there has to be a, a, a layer of that. But yeah, I mean, the operator organizes the uh, connection or well, the API connection with a, with a, with a register holder. Uh, the data that the register holder is actually collecting about me is agreed in a moment where I buy their service. I mean, like, if I buy an Apple phone, currently I do the next, 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 and yes, 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 yes thing, that actually, that's actually an agreement that also sets like what kind of data they collect about me. So basically, that already defines the essence of the, like, uh, the, I say, what can be uh, given out through that API. And we only talk about raw data. I mean, like, for example, if Google have, uh, like, like, looked at my clicks, my behavior, and, like, worked out through their algorithms uh, a, a special profile, what kind of stuff to sell me, that's their intellectual property. We can't touch that. That's their science. But the raw data, like what clicks I did during the last six months in their Google Chrome, that should be my right to decide and share. And if, I, if we give that right to actually decide to whom we give our raw data that was created by us, only by us, that would be a trigger that might activate the whole my data thing. So the fifth freedom together with the right. And obviously, there are like thousands, like David is indeed 10,000 questions to solve. But those, can, those two things can be the, how say, first action points to start turning this huge European, how we say, tanker towards the brighter future. So, let's do it. Because we can all understand the benefits, and the benefits have been already, how to say, proven to you in previous sessions, and will be proven even more during the next sessions, during those three days in this My Data conference. Yeah, your voice must be heard, and if there are more countries stating the same thing, um, the change will happen. Why it will happen is that the competitive advantage of European Union is, I would say, slowing down even more uh, compared with, for example, the US. Uh, but this kind of initiative could bring a huge amount of innovation back to Europe. And together with innovation, there will be brighter, more, more bright brains and, and more money. So all those arguments already heard today here in previous sessions, yes, they are valid. And yes, it will be a totally new industry. It will be totally new jobs and will, will be like, gazillions of euros for Europe again. So thank you for having me and uh, peace freedom. <laughs>